G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's finally happened. We are over the $2 trillion mark. It was literally only months ago, we were kind of floundering. We got up to about uh, 800 billion, nearly 900 billion, and then we fell back down to, I think, under 500 billion. And yeah, now we are literally 4X from where we were, like not that long ago. And yeah, the scary thing is there's probably a whole lot more room to grow. You know, whether it's going to continue to grow at the exponential rate that it has or not, I guess that literally is the million dollar question. You know, if you know that and you're in the right projects, you're probably going to make millions as opposed to, you know, a million. But again, never financial advice. This could all blow up in our face tomorrow, although the chances of that are probably unlikely at the moment. But the further it keeps going, I guess the closer we are to the next retracement. Whether it's a you know really horrible bear market where we lose, you know, eighty percent of Bitcoin and you know ninety five to ninety eight percent of all the altcoins or not, you know that's you know again that is the million dollar question. No one really knows. But I mean at the moment things, you know, we've been traveling sideways for a moment. And as as I've said before, I think of it like a kettle. When you boil a kettle, at first when you turn it on, nothing's happening. It's just sitting there and the heat slowly starts to build and slowly starts to build. And you get one tiny little bubble. Then you get a couple of tiny little bubbles and they're not really doing much, just kind of little bubbles here and there. And then it starts to kind of froth and all that builds up inside the kettle until eventually it just screams its head off. And that's what's been going on for a moment. It has just been kind of, you know, slowly frothing away under that kind of $1 trillion mark. Bitcoin stuck under 60000 Ethereum stuck under 2000 And look, I do think Bitcoin is going to get ready to make another move. Uh, Ethereum already has. And look, Ethereum was leading the way early in this cycle. It was outperforming Bitcoin for a while there. So it doesn't surprise me that Ethereum is actually leading the way again. Because, yeah, last year... Ethereum literally was leading the way. It was moving faster than Bitcoin was. But, you know, it jumps between the two and then all the other altcoins and that as well. So we need to keep that in mind. But look at this, 54%, that dominance is getting low. Really, you know, once it goes under 50% and we start getting down into the 40s and maybe even the 30s, things, you know, if we're going based on history, they are going to get crazy in the altcoin space. And I mean proper yeah it will melt faces you will see coins do things that you just cannot believe and now i'm not saying it's going to do it but you could literally see if we get this crazy altcoin space you could see binance coin go to four or five thousand dollars could i'm not saying it will but that's what happens when things get really crazy like you know and that is generally kind of the end of it as well that it, that's you know the peak and i'm not saying binance is going to four thousand dollars you know 10x from here but you know something similar could happen and again i'm just singling out binance coin because it was there you know there's plenty of other coins that could do that but i mean have a look at this xrp it's almost a dollar it was down 50 cents not that long ago so it seems the sec news is yeah not scaring too many too many people off they feel i think mostly what is happening is that they can see the bitcoin dominance is getting low and everything's going to pump once bitcoin goes on to 50 percent it's just going to be people piling into altcoins you know throwing you know everything but the kitchen sink at it basically but what will be interesting to see is if bitcoin continues to move with it if the whole space just sort of starts to move or was it just you know the altcoins that are really going to pump because at the end of 2017 you know, the real parabola, it was Bitcoin had pumped one day, then it had slowed down, all the alts had pumped, then Bitcoin had pumped the day after, then back to the altcoins, and it was literally just swapping between the two. You know, Bitcoin would still go up a little bit, but, you know, when it was pumping, it went up by a lot, and then it had retraced by, you know, 10, 15%, and then spend a day or two only going up by maybe, you know, 2 or 3%, and then it would jump up 10% again. And that really is that full euphoria, and we're waiting to see if that's going to happen again. All right, gas prices coming down a little bit, but still too high. All right, what's really pumped? Because there's a lot of green here. I mean, look at that, stellar, good Lord, 20%, well done. All right, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? What's done extremely well? So XRP, there you go. Phantom, Stax, uh, Wink, Tezos, Neo, Stellar, Ontology, 
all of those above 15 percent for 24 hours and so that's good gains but look even this is still 14 percent. there we go 15 yearn finance v chain starting to make some moves really nice ethereum classic where did that come from out of nowhere look so some really really good gains here at the moment you know no one's complaining with these kind of gains but what about losses has there been anyone in the top 100 that really hasn't fared too well yep pundi x uh you know coming way down but again i think you're going to see a lot of the coins that you see going down at the moment they've already had big pumps like holo yeah of course that's the way it goes you're going to have these massive almighty pumps but then it just kind of you know it's it's got to its limit and then it's just going to be a, a, a you know a fairly sizable sell-off so you make a hundred percent in seven days you can probably expect to lose 50 to 60 percent of that over the next you know seven days or so or even a little bit more if that was the top it might not be in the top it could go up more but that's generally the way it works whatever you know how much it pumps up you're probably going to lose about a third to maybe two-thirds of that in the sort of short term that's not to say that it can't continue to go up after that but that's where we're looking at i mean you know with xerx 690 percent now it's down 20 percent we we're looking at that yesterday it was 1079 or 69 percent in seven days so look some great gains some you know not so great losses there but really then we're just into the five percent i mean you know holo if you've lost six percent but you're still up you know 105 percent you don't care did you buy it if you've lost five percent but you're still up basically 20 percent you don't really care so that's the things you need to keep in mind is that you know like all markets but particularly crypto markets you know we when we pump like we really pump but when we dump we really dump as well so you've got to be able to ride those highs and weather those lows all right let's have a look at the bitcoin chart so we can see here it is now just ranging sideways it just can't break that sixty thousand dollar mark at the moment and look at some stage we will but i guess you could say we've really been ranging since the 21st of february we've just been stuck around this kind of 57 58,000. we really dipped down there so that was a pretty big dip but then we came up and broke it and then we would look like we we're going to go higher so it was a bit of a fake out and now just a little bit of sideways travel but look it's early in the week at the moment so who knows what could happen but i expect that you know i don't think anything big is going to happen with bitcoin in the kind of the near future like this week maybe next week or in the next couple of weeks we'll get you know some kind of big move but yeah i just think we're probably going to range around here we might you know just get over that kind of sixty two thousand dollar mark and then we fall back down and we're retesting you know 56 57 thousand that's what i think might happen but again never financial advice i could be completely wrong i've been wrong before and i fully expect i'll be wrong again in the future but I've been here for a little while i'm generally not too far off on what's happening all right some good stories so look at this this tells you you know there's still tons of money flowing into cryptocurrencies in general and not just buying the actual assets themselves so blockchain and crypto startups they've raised 2.6 billion dollars this quarter so that figure surpassed 2020 by a total of 300 million so all the money that went into crypto startups last year they've done that in quarter one of this year plus 300 million dollars so there's still plenty of money coming to crypto startups at the moment this is things are still just heating up this is literally still early now how long this is going to last you know i really wish i knew but at the moment, I think, like I said, it's like a kettle that's just starting to boil. We've been at this $60,000 range and things have, you know, been trading sideways and it's just that heat starting to build and build and build before the kettle just starts to burst and, you know, scream its head off. I think that's what's going to happen with cryptocurrencies. That, you know, like I said, I don't think anything big will happen from Bitcoin this week. Now that I've said that, it probably will. But I do think in the next couple of weeks at least, I think we're going to get above that sixty thousand dollar mark. I think that's just going to happen. And what I think is the Bitcoin dominance will slowly come down. I don't think it's going to drop down to, you know, the 30 40 percent like too quickly. It's just going to be gradual. And it's that you know a rising tide uh, lifts all ships. I think you know lots of money is going to continue to come towards crypto into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all that, and everything's going to go up. And we will get to that full parabolic. You know sort of craziness that we saw in 2017 i just don't know exactly when it is but that's 
that's my thought process. That's what I'm, you know, keeping an eye out for, and hence why, you know, I do plan to take some profits along the way. Exactly where I don't know, you know, if my, you know, portfolio doubles from where it already is, then I'll probably take at least another ten or fifteen percent, and then if it doubles again from there, then I'll probably take about twenty, thirty percent from there, and that's kind of my plan. Or if any of my coins specifically hit some of the price targets that I think they might get to. For me, I've already sold 10% of my Bitcoin. I've said that before. I don't know if I'll sell anymore. I mean, if Bitcoin gets to above 200,000, then yeah, I'll, I'll probably sell a little bit more. But I'm basically going to hold on to the, the Bitcoin that I've got left uh, and just start to take some profits and you know wait and see if I'm correct in there being another bear market and Bitcoin may be getting you know back down to you know twenty thirty thousand dollars and I can buy more of it. We'll have to wait and see. All right, moving on. Crypto economy, as we just saw, it's two trillion dollars. XRP's gained thirty seven percent and the dominance has dropped to fifty six percent. Well, we go back here and it was actually fifty four percent. So fifty four point one is it still that? No, it's dropped. There we go. I mean, this is, you know, only happened in the last few minutes, so it can easily go back up at 54%. I think the money is really going to start to move into the altcoins, and we're going to see some just crazy stuff. Now, again, why I don't think it's all over for Bitcoin just yet. So Sacramento Kings, the basketball team, employees and players of the NBA giant, the Sacramento Kings, will be able to receive as much of their salary in Bitcoin as they want, said their team's owner. I mean, this has already happened, you know. Our, I can't remember his first name, but Okung, the, or Okong, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, from the NFL, he was getting half his salary in Bitcoin, and that was like, you know, a couple of million dollars, and he's done extremely well, and there's tons of other people and players that are going to get into this space. And again, you know, I wouldn't be putting everything I own into Bitcoin, because if we go through a bear market, you could, you know, lose 50% of it. But, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with, I don't think it's a bad idea. Again, you just got to be able to ride the highs, but also weather the lows. Based on previous history, you know, it doesn't matter what price you buy Bitcoin at, in four years' time, it should be worth a fair amount more. If history repeats itself, again, never financial advice. MicroStrategy, gee, they got copped a, a grilling along with Tesla about, you know, the price of Bitcoin and all the rest of it, but I don't think they're too worried about it. So the cloud software firm, and this is MicroStrategy, has put another $15 million into Bitcoin. They're still buying. <laughs> Do you think they're worried? They see it stagnating and go, well, that's just a good buying opportunity. It now owns over $5.4 billion in the cryptocurrency. And I reckon they've probably only invested like maybe $1.5 billion. So they've basically 4 x their money. Now, not only that, because their uh, price, their stock price took a bit of a tumble, as did Tesla's, but it seems now it's starting to you know, perk back up again with you know, uh, the price of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies rising as well. So... Yeah, I'm kind of kicking myself a little bit. I saw Tesla's price and MicroStrategy's stock price go down a fair bit. And I considered buying some, but I just didn't. And I really wish I had it. But anyway, that's life. You know, my crypto is still doing pretty well. So it's not the end of the world for me. All right, the Lightning Network, Lightning Network is really starting to gather some sort of speed and some steam now. So we can see here the number of nodes on Bitcoin's Lightning Network has nearly doubled year over year. So it just continues to grow. And I think this is going to continue to grow for quite some time. So the Lightning Network, which is a layer atop the Bitcoin blockchain, and it uses uh, its own special rules to facilitate cheaper and faster transactions, like our Layer 2 for Ethereum, had about 5,353 public nodes in April last year. Now that number sits at 10,000, so it's basically doubled in the last year. And I think it'll continue to do that. Bitcoin, it's still getting started. You know, we haven't even got, you know, the bulk of the population into cryptocurrency yet. I think you'd be lucky if there's maybe three to five percent of the world's population into crypto right now. That's how small it is and that's how early we still are and why there's most likely still so much more upside in the long run. Look, in the mid to short term, we could get hammered by a bear market and that's really going to you know, hurt. Again, I've been through one and I've spoken about that a number of times. But you know, for me, I didn't sell any of the crypto 
that I did really well in 2017 and then really bad in 2018. I've still got all that same crypto now and it's worth probably about, I don't know, five times more than what I put in in 2017 and maybe about 50% more than what it was worth at the height of 2017. So still doing all right and that was just by sitting on it and sitting on it only. That's all I had to do. And most cryptocurrencies have done similar stuff. Even the ones that are kind of, you know, not really talked about and not heard of that much, they've still generally done all right and are now worth more than they've ever been before. You know, things like Cardano and all sorts of stuff doing extremely well. I mean, Cardano, let's go back and have a look. What's their price? A dollar twenty. Their old all-time high was a dollar eighteen. So they are now sitting at their old all-time high. And again, you know, there's talk. People think. Cardano could go somewhere between, you know, five to ten dollars. That means it can still nearly, you know, five x to nearly ten x from here. Again, people talking about Ethereum, maybe going to twenty thousand, even twenty seven thousand. So again, that's a ten x. Bitcoin going to, you know, I'll be careful with the really high ones, but most people are thinking, you know, somewhere around kind of a hundred and fifty to the $250,000 range. I mean, that's a three to sort of five X-ish thereabouts. Again, there's no guarantees in life. It may not do that and we could all be proven wrong. But based on history, this is what it's generally been doing. So, you know, chances are it's going to most likely repeat something fairly similar, a little bit less than the last time. And that's what it's been doing every time. But again, maybe this is that full, you know, adoption phase and we have some super cycle uh, you know, takes it above and beyond what any of us thought it could ever do right last but not least so grayscale now a lot of people have been worried about grayscale's uh gbtc because of the fees that they pay and with the etfs coming out but they've come out now and said on monday grayscale which is owned by coindesk's parent company digital currency group announced it would convert its GBTC into an exchange-traded fund when the U.S. regulatory environment warms uh, to Bitcoin ETF. So basically, GBT is going, GBTC sorry, is going to become a Bitcoin ETF. They're just waiting for the approvals and things like that. And that's good news for you know, people who are in grayscale because they were concerned you know, with the fees and all the rest of it. Uh, and then that you know, they would have to sell their uh, grayscale Bitcoin uh, and then get into an ETF. Now it just is going to be converted straight into one. So that's good for people. And down here it says the conversion would mean GBTC shareholders would no longer have to put up with a six month uh, lockup period. So that's what it was, or a 2% annual management fee. I mean, there'll still be you know, some kind of fee for it. It's not going to be for free. It never is. You've always got to pay something for it. But obviously it'll probably be a little bit lower, maybe even a whole lot lower, maybe, you know, 0.5% management fee. I don't know exactly how that's going to work. But great news for everyone uh, in you know who's got the Grayscale uh, Bitcoin Trust stuff. All right. It's a big week so far. Things are looking really, really good at the moment. I do think we're going to get some big, massive swings in the altcoins. And I'm just really waiting to see you know what happens with Bitcoin. Is it going to start to really pump hard? Because you know, it'd be hard to imagine that Bitcoin has hit its peak at sort of $62,000. It, it may well have. I'm just, yeah, I find that hard to believe. I think minimum it's going to do something like sort of eighty-five-ish, eighty-four thousand dollars $84,000. And that's minimum. I think that would be the minimum uh, top it could get to in this cycle. Really, the, the top, I, I'm, you know, I'm leaning towards, you know, around about where... Uh, Plan B has said, you know, two hundred eighty-eight thousand, you know, three hundred thousand thereabouts. I really do think that will be the peak. But hey, again, I've been wrong. Don't take that as financial advice. It is definitely not. I'm not a financial advisor. It could go way, way higher. It could go way, way lower. Well, you know, the only way we're going to know is with time. All right. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're on that, all on that game train. It's looking pretty good at the moment. And I'll see you next time.